Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Chetel Olsen. I had uh, the honor to introduce myself. I think that it was too difficult uh, to pronounce my name. Uh, I'm a Norwegian. Uh, I live in Oslo and... Uh, okay, I have to stand here. The Norwegians have to stand exactly here in the room, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm in charge of, of Elance in Europe uh, and I have the pleasure to be here in Kiev today. Uh, and also yesterday to, to talk about the Elans and the advantages that Ukrainians have on the platform and how you can build a freelance career uh, working with clients through our platform and also maybe also develop a, 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 a kind of a, a your own startup business on the platform after a while. And that's literally what I'm going to talk about today. Um, does anybody in the room here know about the Elans? A few, handful. Yes, more, more, any more? Yes, good, okay. Probably 40, 50% of the people in the room know about Elans. So, um, but just to give you a kind of an introduction to the market uh, and also to, e to Elans first. So Elans uh, is in the market of what we call a human cloud. So everybody today uses Skype to communicate with. We use salesforce.com for our sales activities. We track our finances uh, over QuickBooks. Uh, we use Box and Dropbox to, to share and store our files. But there is another cloud thing, and that is what we call the human cloud. The human cloud consists of two parts, two parts of a marketplace. On the one side, we have the freelancers, the talents, the experts in any discipline that can be done remotely and online for clients residing all across the world. Uh, it can be within uh, web development, mobile programming, it can be translations, copywriting, creative design, it can be lawyers, it can be ma uh, manufacturing engineers, et cetera, et cetera. Literally everything, every job, every discipline where you don't have to sit in the same room, in the same office, in the same building as your employer or your client. On the other side of the human cloud, the other side of the marketplace, the demand side as we call it, we have the businesses, the companies that are hiring and managing freelancers through online work platforms like Elon's. And in between the freelancers, in between the talents, in between the, and, and the, and the clients and the businesses on the other side, we have pl players like Elon's, like online work platforms that facilitate, so kind of make the ma matchmaking between the freelancers and the businesses that ensures that you can collaborate together in a safe and smooth way, but also that you get paid at the end of the day. So Elon's been in the market for a few years now, uh, and we gained some, some really nice results. Um, but we are a company that is headquartered in Silicon Valley. We have office in Oslo and Norway. Uh, we are owned by some of the largest uh, venture capital firms in the world, like Kleiner, Perkins, NA Venture, etc. This is all the boring stuff. We also have 100 employees uh, in the office in Oslo and Silicon Valley, but we also have 200 freelancers working for us online to our own platform in programming, in design, in, in product specifications, in translating, literally all disciplines that are represented on Elon's on the platform is also working for us as a company to develop our offering. So we use our own medicine and we're proud of that. We have a lot of great talent in the company. Actually, we have a few Ukrainians also working for us, both on the platform, but also in the business uh, uh, or in the offices in, in Silicon Valley. Just to give you some, some numbers, uh, we have around about 160 companies that were posting jobs on the platform the last six months. 213,000 jobs were posted on, in, in Q3 2012. 180 countries are represented. Uh, our clients are really happy with the freelancers they find on Elon's because I rate them 4.8 out of five possible. Uh, Ukraine. Ukrainian talent, Ukrainian freelancers have kind of, is doing such a good job that you are ranked as number four globally on Elon's in terms of freelancers earnings. So really making a lot of money, $35 million in the last few years is made by Ukrainian freelancers. 1,787 jobs were awarded uh, from clients on Elon's to Ukrainian freelancers in last quarter. Uh, since you are IT guys, at least most of you guys, uh, 85,000 IT jobs, programming jobs were posted on Elon's in Q3. Uh, we had an 82% year-over-year growth in kind of jobs that had Python in it. 
uh, and we have 12,000 Python developers on the platform. So this kind of a little bit boring figures, but just to kind of show you a little bit on the scale on the platform. Um, but what I'm here to talk about is how you guys can start a career as a freelance developer on Elon's. That's the first step. When and if, or if is probably not the right thing, when you are be becoming successful as a freelancer on Elon's, you can then later turn into actually running your own company with people uh, selling their services on our platform. But let, let us start with a few facts. So we've done some surveys with, our, uh, with the freelancers using our platform. We see that they're happier than normal employees because they have the freedom to choose when to work, where to work, for whom to work, and also the, 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 the freedom to follow the passion to work with what you'd like to work. Um, we also uh, have asked our uh, freelancers, are you more productive? And they say, yes, we are more productive in a freelance position than what we are working as ordinary employees. And also we see that their income is actually growing quite significantly. Uh, I think it was around about 75% of the users who said that they have an income that is growing more than 20% this year versus last year. And more or less everybody expects that their income working as freelancers on platforms like Elon's will also grow next year. So conclusion, happier, more productive, and also making uh, lots of nice money. Um, but how to be successful on the platform, that's a little bit on the question. Uh, first of all, register an account, that's the basics. Then describe your services. What do you do? What is it that you are an exceptionally good Python developer or programmer in general? Prove your skills. We have 400 online skills tests available on the platform for you to prove to potential clients that you master what you say you do. So take those tests, because then you become ranked among everybody else that have taken that test, and it works as a good instrument for you to get the first job, because the first job is the hardest one to get. Coming a little bit back to that later. Upload a portfolio. If you have some good codes, if you have programmed some website or done some iPhone apps, show that them on the profile section of the platform, just to show potential clients what you have done, either on the platform or outside the platform. Add your resume and also define your hourly rate. Next step, when you start looking for jobs, because jobs are posted on a platform and you have to look for them yourself. You also get some notification in your email box, but best thing would be go in, search for jobs that matches your skill set, but also what you would like to be paid. Uh, look for jobs that have a complete job description where you can actually address the need of the client, because some clients just say, we need a website, we need an iPhone app, we need an Android app, whatever. I'm not sure if that's the job that you want to go for. Go for something that where the client really knows what it's after. That's the first tip. Look also for jobs where there are a few competing freelancers. Because in this world, there are a lot of people that do bid for all kind of jobs that are posted on the platform. Uh, and if the competition is hard, try to avoid them. Uh, look for jobs where there are a few competing freelancers where there are no or few invites. Because if there are invites, or meaning that the, the client have invited other freelancers to bid for the job, then they normally have a preference to work with them. So don't kind of waste your time on that kind of jobs. But also look for jobs that has an appropriate budget. What you will see is that for the first jobs, before you have gained, had any job on the platform before, it will be hard to get your first job. Be patient, uh, but also be willing to lower your rate. If you normally would ask 20, 30, 40 dollars per hour to work for a client here in Kiev or on any other platform, you might not get that on the first job on the platform here. So lower it. But as soon as you have rating, as soon as you have experience, then you will see that you are able to push the rates up and most likely above what you normally get in, in the kind of the, in the offline market. Um, when you start bidding for jobs, so on Elon's on, on on our kind of competitors, you don't apply for jobs because this is the service market. You actually bid for jobs. You submit a proposal. So read the job description, see what the, the client is looking for. Then you start kind of writing a proposal where you introduce yourself, you address the need of the client. If he doesn't have kind of given you any good specifications on the job, actually ask him questions. What do, does he actually look for? Estimate the delivery date, set your proposal value, etc. So then the job is submitted. If you get a job, 
I'm very basic now, but kind of describing some of the success factors here. Sending my thank you note, saying thank you for awarding the job to me, start discussing the project scope with him, discussing the milestones of the job. But before you start working for him, if this is a fixed price job, ask to have the escrow account funded. The escrow account is where the client have to submit the agreed upon amount, the amount he will pay you for the job so that they are in safe hands before you start working because that ensures that you get the money when you have completed a job. So just make sure that you have that. Um, deliver high quality work, respond in time, deliver according to the schedule and milestones, communicate professionally, all those kind of basic stuff. That is what you kind of give you some success. There are some benefits. You will have a web portfolio and a profile. You will have visibility to thousands of prospective clients. As I said, there are 200,000 jobs posted on the platform every quarter. I think the last few days, uh, or the last 30 days, is up to 78,000. So it's actually growing quite fast. Uh, you have guaranteed payments for great delivered work. Uh, you also, in case there should be a conflict between you and the client, we have some dispute team that goes in and tries to settle any conflicts between you and the client. Any questions so far? Then we take the questions after. Six key freelancer takeaway. As I said, time. Invest time in your freelance profile. Don't, don't think that you can just register and you will get a job immediately. That is not the case. There are 1.8 million freelancers on the site. There is competition. So the client look for those who spend valid time in building a good profile, in sending in the best, res uh, the, the best um, proposals. Scout for the right jobs. Look for something that is a match between what you're looking for and what the client is looking for, your skill sets. Tailored proposals. Right to the point, tailored proposal. Don't copy paste from the last job you submitted a proposal for, because the client will see that immediately. Uh, so try to tailor the proposal, address the needs every single time. Ensure the escrow funding, be professional in the collaboration with him, and as I said, be patient. It takes time to get the first job. But when you first get, the, the get a job, then the ball starts rolling. Then you will, you will have a rating on your site, you will have earnings on the profile, the client will see that you have worked for the client, will see what kind of job it is, then it's get easier to get the next job. So you will gain success. So as soon as you start gaining success, you get more and more popular uh, freelancer on Elance, uh, you will see that the clients are actually starting to invite you to bid for his jobs. He wants you to work for him. And in many cases, we see that the freelancers are actually have too much to do. They, cannot, they have to say no to jobs because they are, are these kind of popular guys. They have unique skill sets. They have consistently delivered great quality of work to the client. And then you have to turn jobs down. Isn't that silly that you have to say no to $50 per hour or $60 per hour, whatever it is. But what you can do is really then to start to build your own business because you have signed up on Elance, you worked on the platform for a while, you get a resume, you, get a, you gain success. So why don't you just build a business yourself out of it? Why don't you start hiring other freelancers to work for you? That is actually something that happens every day. We see that the successful people on Islands, they start hiring other freelancers to work for them. And then they take an arbitrage of that. So I wanted to show you a few options on how you can really build your own business. We have the vertical and virtual option. I'm going to talk a little bit more on that on the next job. That means that you continue in the exact same way as you do today. If you're a web developer, Python developer, you can continue uh, hiring other Python developers. Or you can take the horizontal or the, hy the hybrid uh, way, which is that you actually hire people that complement your skills. For example, if you're a web developer, you can start looking for mobile developers, looking for graphic designers, QA resources, and UX resources to actually do bigger jobs for, uh, that is worth much more money, bigger project, more fun project, whatever that could be. So the, the vertical option is really that you build an on-demand virtual team of online freelancers uh, where you, uh, which have the same skills as you have, uh, where you uh, use your ratings, your good feedback, your standing in this marketplace to win jobs. But then you can outsource those jobs again to other people that you hire. 
and then you kind of maybe they are cheaper than you and then you win some money on the difference between what you normally win the job for and what they, the other freelancer would do the job for. So then you can actually act more like the project manager, the QA resources to ensure that you have top quality. So if you sell your services for $50 per hour to a client in the US or in Germany, wherever it is, and then you can hire other freelancers which doesn't have that good rating for $25 per hour and you make the money in between that. So it's a good way to get them started. You get more money, you can start building up your own business. The other alternative is what we call the hybrid model or the horizontal model, where you build a hybrid team consisting of some people in an office in Kiev, or in Lviv, or wherever it is in Ukraine, um, that is the core team of the organization. Let's say you are the lead or the project management. Then you go out and sell your services on Elon's, and then you win more and more business. But that could be for bigger projects than what you originally were doing as an individual freelancers. So you then, as I said, you start to hire UX uh, designers, you hire Q QA resources, mobile developers, etc., etc., so that you're actually a big team but you have a core team in place that maybe sits in the same office, that share the same office, but then you start hiring online freelancers for, uh, pro for every project that you have. You have different resources for different projects depending on what kind of uh, uh, project it is. So the tasks are executed by those with the best skills. That's kind of the overall thing. So these are two different models. Does it make sense? Good. Have you done it already? <laughs> Looked like... <laughs> So I think th this is two good ways actually to, to be a freelancer, have the technical skills, but actually evolve as an entrepreneur, build your own business, but you start as the freelancer and you get a popular one. And then you see that, yes, more and more jobs are coming to you. I guess this is what you have experienced on some of the other platforms that you worked on, that you get more jobs, you invited for jobs. So it's just this unique way. But you can only do it if you deliver good quality the whole time. So just a few of the success criteria. So regardless, if you're working as a freelancer or kind of have a small software agency or company, uh, there are some kind of key criteria, success criteria working with the clients. So quality, quality, quality. It might sound stupid, but it is a key to having success working on online work platforms like Elon's, that you deliver the best quality of the whole time. Why do you have to work 10 hours more than what you have agreed with a client? He's paying you for 50, but you work 60 hours. Just do it because your rating on the platform depends on it. Be responsive. Respond when he requires it uh, or she requires it. Uh, be professional the whole time. Just kind of showcase your expertise. Uh, adherence to schedule. Always deliver on schedule. If you're not able to deliver on schedule, tell the customer, I'm late. They accept that. But don't avoid telling them anything because then it's get pissed off and don't want to work with you again, give you a bad rating. Over deliver, don't over promise. That's kind of a key trick. So work with other freelancers. So if you start hiring other freelancers on Elance to help you out, test several to find the best of them. Look for somebody that has the kind of the good way of working, the one that you would like to work with, having the best skills that you're comfortable, that you like working with. Lead and support them. In one way you have to lead, in the other way you have to support them. But the overall objective is to deliver a great project back to the client. Give in the same way as you require comprehensive specifications from the client, you also have to give that back to the freelancers that you are hiring again. So kind of be specific on what you need. Use milestones in projects. If it's a big project, split it down on milestones so that you can kind of have a plan on how you work together. It's kind of simple project planning. See them as team members rather than somebody residing in the cloud and that you never meet again. Just look at them as team members. They just sit in a different location. So in Elance we have, as I said, we have 200 freelancers working for us through our own platform. About half of these guys we conceive as, as core elancers. They are part of our team. They are people that we are colleagues with, but we've never met them because they sit in 
Does it in Romania? Does it in Bulgaria? Does it in Greece? Does it in Ukraine? We are, I, one of the guys I'm working closest with is sitting in Karachi in Pakistan. I, I perceive him as being a good colleague of me, but I never met him. He's not working out of our office, but he's a good colleague. We kind of established this kind of good relationship. So build long-term relationships also with your freelancers that you use on the platform, because then you can hire them again and again and again, and together you are delivering better and better product and quality to your clients. In general, there are kind of a few tips on running a business on the platform hiring other freelancers. This is applicable to both software companies, but also startups and other kind of companies that is using Elance in a way to find resources and talent that can work for them. It's like sit down with your colleagues, with friends, with team members, and ask what kind of jobs can we use online freelancers for? Who should, when should we use them? Where should I be? What kind of skills should I possess? Then evolve your work. So if you start hiring other freelancers to work for you, not that you are a freelancer selling the services to others, but if you start hiring others, evolve your work. Don't just kind of jump in hiring a lot of freelancers for big projects immediately, but start kind of growing uh, the, the spend and the, the projects you're putting, in, uh, putting them on instead of kind of just putting everything in one basket and hope that this goes well. Don't only think cost savings. Yes, there are cheaper uh, programmers and translators and virtual assistants sitting in other countries in, in, in Asia. But don't only to, to kind of think about that. Think about a hybrid organization model consisting of some people sitting in an office, uh, some people residing in the cloud, and that you have access to 1.8 million freelancers in all disciplines, in all skill sets that you need then you will create a successful organization. So there are a few very successful uh, freelancers and businesses that sell their services out of Elon's here in Ukraine. We see one of them, I just said business 12345 and freelancer 12345 because I don't want to show their names, but one of the agencies that sell their services out of uh, Ukraine on Elon's makes a stunning almost $1.8 million on the platform this year. They have gained success. They are delivering good quality results to the clients. If you see on the freelancer side, the top five is making between $33,000 to $34,000 and up to $45,000 a year. It's quite good money. So it's actually absolutely potential to make some, some nice money working as an only freelancer, whether that is full-time or part-time, beside your full-time job, in the weekends, whatever it is. So I suggest you kind of go home and... Uh, sign up on Elon's, start making money working with clients all over the world as Python developers. Thank you very much. Um, so I guess like the, the main question for Ukrainians is about the, um, the way they get money to Ukraine. Like because the most uh, freelancers I believe that work on Elon's are receiving all the money in black. Um, and it, it is because um, you know, there is some kind of bureau bureaucracy policy in Ukraine that we have signed some kind of papers like between a uh, money giver and, and freelancer. So do you like work somehow like to like make it easier for us making money white, like not black? I think it's a very important question to raising that. So first of all, we don't know whether our users are paying taxes or not. We do hope they do so. Uh, and it's actually part of our terms of service that uh, the freelancer and the client should pay the applicable taxes in their local countries. However, we, we cannot control. We have freelancers in 156 countries and clients in 180 countries, but we do our best. However, what we are doing is that we're looking into uh, how we can support freelancers working individually, working through umbrella companies, uh, where we kind of these days are actually establishing partnerships so that you then work under the arms of another business that have a legal entity and that you then can make money completely legally. Then you also had another question, uh, what, which was about payments, how to receive them in the best possible way. So today we uh, support uh, bank transfer, uh, PayPal, uh, Payoneer, and Moneybookers credit cards. Uh, I think there is room for more. Um, um, I've heard about the, the web money, RU, et cetera. So I think it's one of the things that we in Elance need to work with to get better, to make it easier for the freelancers, both to receive money, but also to pay taxes, et cetera. But uh, we do hope that you pay your taxes.
I have to pay my taxes. <laughs> then you have the question. Thank you. Um, so, for many of us, as far as you know, uh, we are not a part of Union European, and um, some embassies um, ask for a, like a agreement um, with the customers. So, is your service provides this uh, for uh, freelancers? I'm not sure if I understood the question. So you say that when you work for foreign clients. Okay, I cl clarify. Uh, so uh, embassies uh, could uh, request for an uh, um, agreement of uh, um, a, a customer which I work in with. Um, uh, it can re request for, uh, I don't know, um, payment. Is it uh, not in black scheme? It's, uh, so uh, this kind of documents, uh, yeah. So because Elance is this marketplace where the, the relationship is between the client and the freelancer directly and that we only facilitate the contact, I don't think we will take any responsibility for providing those documents. But however, what you should do is that you then should ask the client for those specific documents that are needed or that he asks you about those documents are needed. Uh, however, there is, uh, we just actually this week, we launched, uh, we did a trial launch of VAT functionality. So freelancers now residing in the European Union, Canada and Australia will be the first one to test out new VAT functionality so that contractors can invoice clients uh, with the kind of applicable VAT law if it takes place. However, in 99% of the cases, or even more, even for Ukrainian and Europe in general, and Canada, Australia, VAT will never be invoiced to the client because that is uh, when you invoice between from one country to another country, that is normally exempt VAT. So it's a client that anyway needs to do a reverse charge mechanism. Very technical language now, but it will never be that. But we will still supply that functionality so that in case you do work with a, a client that resides in Ukraine, being a Ukrainian freelancer, then you can be in accordance with the VAT legislation for services. Uh, you mentioned that uh relations between uh, client and uh, U.S. freelancer are direct, uh, but payments are through your service, right? So th this is a, a big issue in Ukraine because uh, payments should come from, from your client, actually. And if you even get some contract, official contract, the money should, should come from client directly. And if so, uh, just wire transfer from your company doesn't help here. How, how to manage that in this case? Tough question to answer. Uh, it's one I never heard before. Uh, but it is, I think, the, the only way, uh, or we cannot avoid it. Uh, and the single reason that we cannot avoid it is because the, we want the freelancer's money to be safe with the escrow account. And we are the ones that are in possession of the escrow account. So we, to be able to ensure that you get the money when you have completed a great piece of work for a client, let's say that you spent 200 hours on it, we don't want you to risk not getting the money because the client can kind of go outside our system. So then I think it's just that uh, either Ukrainian tax government needs to change their legislation or that we need to go in discussions with them. Uh, and I see with one of our competitors being behind me here, I think we need to, uh, we, we are now starting to see Ukraine such an important country. We start now to see that the, the whole market is, in, 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 is becoming bigger and bigger every year. So I think we need to use our positions, uh, the fact that we do create jobs, to also talk to governments for them to make it easier. Uh, one, one example is that we were, in, uh, we were invited by the World Bank to go to Tunisia and talk about Elans uh, to local um, uh, to some workers and some unions and some, uh, some government officials. And one of the things we said, guys, if you want your local talent, programmers, designers, whatever it is, to start making money with foreign employers, you need to open up for foreign bank transfers. Your guys need to be able to get their money in. So that was kind of an, an awakener for them because they now see that this market that is turning a billion dollars this year will maybe be two billion dollars next year, etc. And skilled people can get actually quite a good living out of working on platforms like us. 
and it's kind of a way out of unemployment, and then governments need to support it. So I, I, I'm, I, I know that I didn't give you a very good answer to your questions, but I cannot give you any better. Uh, it's just that we need to work with that. And the more information you can provide me with about this specific topic, I'm happy to receive. But the uh, written agreement between you and the freelancer is not possible, right? <coughs> There are some, some occasions where it's happened when uh, we don't do it, but there is this business process outsourcing uh, cases. And in, in those cases, because we don't do it, we don't do it really, but there are players in the market to do it. And then the, things, the, the, the situation is different. So uh, we just have to investigate what, if that is something that we need to do in the future to make it easier for you or for Ukrainian talent in general. Oh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, what is the business model for your lands? Do you take a fixed percent of uh, payments or something else? So our model is in general that we make money when you make money. So we take 8.75% uh, fee on the, the freelancers' earnings. Um, the basic membership is free. Uh, which most of the freelancers are using, actually absolutely most of the freelancers are using. Uh, but if you are more active than the ordinary freelancer, which means that you bid for more jobs, then you, that you're playing in more categories, then you want to have team members in your account, then there is memberships. Uh, the cheapest, uh, or the individual premium membership, which means that kind of you as a freelancer upgrade to bid for more jobs cost you $10 per month. But I recommend that you start anyway with the free one. Because if you get, get jobs on that one, then you don't need the, the paid one. Uh, I'm working with Elance uh, for more maybe than uh, several years, and uh, maybe even seven years, something like this. And I have a question about the old clients we have. Um, we still pay this 8%. Is it possible, maybe, do you have a plans to, to lower this percentage for very, very old customers which we found on Inlands? Uh, this is a question actually back to you. Uh, we, we at least we had uh, a situation where we lowered the fee when you, we, you and your clients had... Is that, that is still on, right? So okay. Okay. But anyway, Elon is the one that has the lower fee, lowest fee in the market. So we have 8.75 percent. The competitors have minimum 10 percent. So we are still on a relative low level. And I, but I do understand what you say. Um, but of course, we need also to make the money, right? So, so uh, 8.75 percent is not really that bad. Uh, maybe it is, but also you see that we have the technical platform which we're continuing the developing, etc. But you shouldn't be surprised if there is one time in the future the, the race will be lower. Uh, we'll see. I cannot promise you anything. <laughs> but it's a good question. So uh, a, a typical uh, hourly rate for an established developer on the lens, well, say could be $25 per hour. Well, I, I can see some, well, Pythonists have this rate. And now let's imagine someone uh, charges uh, $35 per hour. What's the portrait of this person? Would um, a customer say that, well, that's crazy, we better uh, hire some beginners? In which cases would you think it's, um, it's okay, what kind of, well, person, business would it be with high hourly rate? Uh. I think it very much depends on what kind of client it is. Uh, uh, sorry, if it's the new clients, uh, new uh, p businesses that have not hired people on Elance or any other online work platform before, they tend to come because, hey, here's a lot of uh, cost savings for us. That's kind of the only reason they're coming here. Uh, and that's also the rational maybe for the first and the second job. And then they say, let's see if I can find a PHP developer or a Python developer for $15. And then, but it's a little bit like this. If you pay uh, peanuts, you get monkeys. Uh, 
uh, it's a little bit strong, uh, strong terminology, but it is if you pay really low money and that's the only thing you're after, then you get results thereafter also. Because at the end of the day, most people want to have, most clients want to have quality. And then they have to pay for quality. And if $35 is expensive to pay for a kind of really good uh, PHP developer or any developer that is doing great work, then I think the, the, the client is the one that has the problem. So I think the, the, the situation when you meet these guys that really want to kind of hire somebody on $7 per hour, I don't think that's the client that we want to work with. So, but I do see that we are pushing, the prices are pushing up and up. Because I see that the fact that what the clients are after, they, they want to have somebody that can start soon, that can deliver quality, that, where they can actually grow with the, the talent or the talent can grow with business so that they actually work together on the long run. They start in the beginning on a relatively small basis. It's as, as you said before in my presentation, is that you have always some client that you work with which is in a big project and somebody on a, a small project that you can work on in between to have variation, but also maybe to learn new things. So I think you, you, when you have the skills, when you have experience on the platform, when you start seeing invitations, you will probably be the one that is actually saying, no, I don't want to work for you. Even if you invite me, I don't want to work for you. But of course, it takes a little bit of time to get there because you're not there immediately. You need this experience, you need a rating, you need the feedback and the comments that are kind of pushing your profile up. Thank you. Good. Then uh, I think there are some uh, light talks soon. Uh, and uh, Elans is also sponsoring the beer after the talks today, so uh, I hope you can have a beer on us. Uh, it's well-deserved. Ukrainians, as I say, is really popular in Elans, and we hope that we can celebrate a little bit of that today. So hope you had a great day so far, and also that tomorrow will be a cool day for you. Thank you very much.